Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Today we want to talk about site search. Site search obviously very important to get people to your product detail pages and therefore we're going to dive into the best on-site and exter external search strategies for Shopify. I have Luke Carthy with me. He's an e-commerce consultant and a brand ambassador for DoFinder at DoFinder.com. And he has a vast background when it comes to growth and SEO disciplines. And also he has a very good background on different brands. Also, he was running his own e-commerce store. So a lot of um, experience from um, Luke there. And um, let's get started and say hello. Hi, Luke. How are you today? Yeah, really good. How are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Luke, give me a bit of a background where you're coming from. What got you into e-commerce? What got you into search? All right, that's a good question. So for me, I kind of dipped my toe in the world of e-commerce at the age of about 15 slash 16. Um, and it was back in the days where I've shown my age now, but you know, the big TVs, the big CRT televisions, um, they were being phased out and um, the flat screens and HD TV was being phased in. Um, and it was at that particular point where HDMI cables were horrendously expensive. And I thought there's got to be a way that I could take a look um, and find a cheaper way to, to, to find these cables. I at the time had a job at an electrical retailer, so I was already on the cutting edge of, of technology at that point. Um, so yeah, went to Alibaba, bought some stock, um, started selling stuff on eBay and, and the, uh, the book bit me from there. I've been in, into e-commerce ever since. Okay, so really, um, really practice day by day e commerce with everything that comes to it. So yes, you went exactly. the, the whole roller coaster of being an e commerce entrepreneur. Now, when we look into today's e commerce, obviously, it has changed a lot over the years. Um, Two million Shopify stores around about there right now. And what we see a lot from, from our clients is that one main feature is missing, and that's site search. All people are not doing the right way. Um, so let's talk a little bit why site search is so important. What's your take on that? All right. So site search, uh, you're absolutely right. It's hugely important. Um, and the main reasons for that is typically people that use site search are a lot more likely to convert and have a lot more purchase uh, intent than people who don't, um, particularly on mobile. And as we know, of course, it's, it's, uh, it's not surprising or shouldn't be surprising for anyone to hear that you know, typically 70 to 80% of traffic now is, is, is predominantly driven from mobile devices, right? So if you want a mobile, you've got less real estate, a more consolidated menu, site search is massively important. Um, but of course, it also sets precedence and first impressions. You know, people are searching for something and the results that they get aren't great or unclear or nothing is found. It really kind of starts to set off um, people's perceptions as to you as a brand, you as a retailer, and the security and, and uh, reliability of your site, right? So it's it's hugely important, massively important. Mm -hmm. When it comes to search, obviously everyone uses Google plenty of times every day and people are used to the kind of way you use a, um, a search engine. Now, a lot of stores just don't do that. Um, what do you think, what kind of uh, features a site search should bring to the table to make it as most as efficient as possible? All right, really good question. So for me, one of the most important things is that the site search uses some kind of sorting priority um, that's outside of um, typical configuration. So this could be sales performance over the last 30 days. Um, it could be click performance, visibility, whatever that, that is, but and whatever works best for your vertical, but having something that allows users to see products that are seasonal, selling at the moment um, higher than, than other items. Um, I think the, the, the tricky balance with that, though, and one thing I see with clients is, let's say, for example, you're in the world of apparel, in retail and fashion, you have quite good and strong shifts in fashion, where you go from autumn to winter, you might be phasing out, you know, maybe hundreds of SKUs at one time, and then bringing in equally a lot of new SKUs at the same time. So for new items with no sales history, no visibility, no clicks, how do you kind of give precedence to those particular items? So... There is a balance, uh, and for me, the way that the balance works really well is if you give new items um, an opportunity for a window, whether that's a week, whether that's a month, um, to rank slightly more aggressively and slightly higher um, to give those visibility and to kind of almost bring an end to that chicken and egg cycle, right? So do you show items that are selling well and have always been staples in your brand, 
or do you give an opportunity for new and brand new emerging items to get visibility? And it really is just a balancing act between the two. Um, but if you're not considering sales performance, as well as click through rate and also newness, um, you're missing out. It should be one of the biggest things we should uh, be taking a look at. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're sort of referring to the Pareto principles or the 80-20 rule and then just work it from there? Absolutely. 80-20 is a great place to start. And um, I'll mention as well that when it comes to, uh, say, DoFinder specifically, you have the option to throw in those parameters and, and throw in new items um, and also set that precedence and behavior as well and how you want it to behave. So um, but whether it's DeFi you're looking at or another third party search solution or also even maybe a native solution, it's definitely something to, to look at if you have that flexibility uh, at the box. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of um, themes, Shopify themes come with sort of features, um, search features in there. Obviously, Shopify itself from the basic installation has some search in there, but obviously it's lacking a lot of features. And I understand that dofinder.com has features like AI search, um, like autocomplete, smart search. Um, give me a bit on, on, on insight, how much that helps with um, using your site with the usability. All right, so you touched on a really good point there, which is native site search, right? So whether it's Shopify, WooCommerce, even the big kind of enterprise level things with, um, with Salesforce Commerce or even Shopify Plus, right? The native search that you get is more likely than not, not necessarily fit for purpose. It's a base product, um, but it's not necessarily the product that's best for your customers. Um, and I think Shopify is a perfect example. So. To give you an idea, the reporting you'll get in Shopify is very basic. So you get an understanding as to what search terms have been searched for. The same in Google Analytics, you'll get an idea of what search queries have been searched for. But what you won't get is context as to performance. So what are the search queries that are yielding um, the most amount of returned items, right? And that could be seen as a good or bad thing. And to give you an example, if you have a search query that's maybe one or two words and, and fairly broad, you might have lots of items that are returned, which isn't always a good thing because it means that if you've got a lot of people searching for something, um, there's an opportunity here to show a merchandised experience, to redirect to maybe a landing page that helps them refine and filter down what they're looking for. Um, if we take a look now at the inverse of that, where people are searching for something and nothing is found, the native Shopify search solution won't give you that data. Well, do find there are other search solutions will be able to give you data on, look, lots of people are searching for this particular thing, whether it's a brand, a product, a product code, whatever that might be. Um, and that can really help you to identify, one, um, your search engine's understanding. So is it a misspelling that you need to add in? Um, is it a, a language and, and that sort of thing that your native site search doesn't understand? Or actually, do you have a real opportunity here to start to sell things that maybe your audience wants, but you don't yet necessarily have in stock yet? But either way, that depth of knowledge and context um, can really help you to drive conversion. Um, and ultimately, when I work with clients, um, that is one of the biggest things that I find that we can unlock revenue and additional sales and improve conversion is finding those opportunities where you've got both extremities, either loads of searches um, or loads of search results, sorry, or no search results at all. So it's, it's hugely important to get right. Yeah, very good point. And I see that as well with his clients and lots of stores. Um, people think just adding a smart search will help the usability sort of convenience for your visitor. But at the end, it helps you as a merchant to understand just what you explained is like, are there any searches for products that I don't hold? So there might be an opportunity for you to to add more products to your store. Um, or maybe um, your description of your products is just totally misleading and people are looking for something that's not really what you do when it comes to product detail pages a search engine is only as good as the data you feed in from your site so what's your recommendation to um, have on a product detail page it's, um might be the description might be the pricing any kind of text what would you add the, um, to help the search engine basically to um, spit out the right results yes yeah, so this is a really interesting question and i think um, it's, I'm going to give a very typical answer, which is it depends, right? Whether you're in a world of SEO or search, I think it's, uh, it's an important answer. But the reason why I say it depends is because it really depends on the products you sell and how good your product descriptions are, how good your content is. Um, because you can have an item that uh, talks about a collection, 
um, you could have a really broad in-depth description. And as a result of that, what you might find is when someone's searching for a particular keyword out of context, it might start to bring up irrelevant results um, because it's matched in the description, but it's not necessarily the right thing to do. So to give you an example, let's say you're looking at a red T-shirt and that same T-shirt in the description, we've mentioned it's also available in purple, black and yellow. Right. So the problem there is if someone then searches for yellow T-shirt, there's a good chance that the other colors will start to appear, which isn't what you wanted as a user. So you can absolutely use a description, but what you might wish to do is, is, of course, test it, but then reduce its dependency and impact. So you might have a minimal impact where it uses a bit of description as a fallback if it can't find anything else, but don't use it as a dominant factor. Um, I think in terms of additional data points as well, one of the really thing, uh, really good things that works well for my omnichannel uh, clients, whether they've got a high street presence and an online presence, or maybe they've got a B2B uh, infrastructure, is to throw in sales performance uh, across all of their channels. Because in isolation, you might be selling, again, I'll use an example, the red t-shirt online might be your best seller consecutively, but actually across all of your high street stores due to merchandising availability, whatever those factors are, it might be say uh, the black jeans, for example, that sell a lot more on a high street front end. So by taking in your sales performance across the board, in store, uh, telephone sales, whatever those points are, it means you have a kind of a collated and joined up way of showing your sales performance across all channels. Um, so I think that's really important to, to alleviate bias. Um, and I think additionally to that as well, which is probably separate to data, is a really good up-to-date list of synonyms um, and similar words. So uh, a perfect example for this, uh, it doesn't really matter how smart your search engine is, whether it's AI driven, whether it's a basic um, you know, native implementation, there are always going to be words, spellings that the search engine just doesn't understand especially when they're not typical words found in a dictionary. Um, so, I mean, I'll give you one particular example. I had a client some time ago where, and they, they worked in the world of um, gifts and cards. And, you know, if you search for the word girlfriend, there's two words, no results were found, which is quite embarrassing when you think about it. So it doesn't necessarily matter how big a business you are, how small a business you are, um, it really makes sense to keep tabs on synonyms, your similar words. Um, and one final example is the word of, world of sofas, right? Everyone has a different meaning and a different word to address your sofa, depending on markets, where you live in the world. So there's couch, sofa, setting, and probably a string of others. Um, there's misspellings in all of those. There's accents. You've got autocorrect to deal with on mobile phones. There's often the biggest opportunities is always in the incremental wins, right? So one synonym alone won't probably make that much of a difference but if you're properly configuring you know tens or hundreds of synonyms in your e-commerce site search they're going to have um, a compounded effect and really start to improve the performance of, of how people use your search mm -hmm. i think very good um, insight that you gave there obviously that does not only help you with your um, internal search like dofinder.com but also with your overall seo strategy to get results from organic search results. Is that right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, that's a really good point you touched on actually about how you can start to use your organic search data into site search and vice versa. Um, there's a particular third party tool that I really like to use um, in Google. And the reason why I recommend it is because regardless whether you work in the world of SEO or not, it's a tool that everyone can, can use and have access to. And it's called Keywords Everywhere. And it's a little Google Chrome extension, and it allows you to throw in maybe a, a core keyword. So we'll, we'll say sofas, for example, and it will give you a lot of long tail keywords, um, synonyms, and other ways in which you can address um, that particular keyword. And that can really help you to define your synonyms, how other people search, behave, how Google responds to that, and translate it into your site search, and vice versa, right? Um, but there's a caveat here. And that caveat I'm going to throw in is, as just as I've mentioned, uh, making your synonyms optimized and all your um, kind of related keywords, having too many can also be a problem. Where you've got too many relationships between keywords and you can completely change the sentiment and understanding of what the search engine believes that keyword is about. 
So the rule that I like to have is if there is no historical search volume for a particular synonym, do not include it because you're going to be in a situation possibly where you have 30 keywords for sofa of which four might actually cross over to another product altogether. So then you become, you get into a situation where you make the search actually a lot less powerful by doing too much work. Um, so to recap on that, if there is no search history for the word that you're throwing in or looking to add, don't add it in because you've got to make your search engine slower for one and two, you're going to dilute the performance an understanding of, of the search engine itself. Okay, very good example. I think another thing where we have to push now a little bit to our clients, to our Shopify merchants or e-commerce merchants, whatever system they are on, is that they have to put some work in their description. Um, obviously, you know it as well. <laughs> it's like a lot of them just tend to put in a list of features and leave it like this. Um, it's really a, a hard job to come up with a copy with a text that not only is descriptive and has the benefits but also is optimized for internal and external search is that right yes absolutely um <laughs> it, it's a challenge for sure and you know as a e-commerce store founder myself i think descriptions are that i mean they're granular right so if you sell you know 10,000 products you've got 10,000 descriptions to write um typically speaking um, so they're kind of labor intensive, but you can't necessarily see how descriptions move the needle in terms of conversion because it's difficult to attribute performance to descriptions. Um, but they're important, they're helpful. Yes, they help site search, but um, especially if you sell your own products. So if you're a brand um, who's created their own range of products, and you know that's one challenge in itself where your descriptions have to be on point because you're selling your own brand, you're selling your own products. There's not other companies out there who they can go to and understand what that's about. The, the, that changes somewhat if you're a reseller. So if you are, let's say, an electrical reseller and you sell Samsung TVs or LG TVs, there is plenty of content available from those manufacturers that you can, quite frankly, copy and paste from and amend. Um, and that makes your job a little bit uh, easier. But it really depends, again, on a lot of factors, some of which are the item price. So, you know, if you're talking fast moving consumer goods and your average transaction value is around about maybe $20, $30, there's less of a precedence to have a really solid description versus, as we said before, a sofa or designer clothing or designer glasses, where actually an inferior description is going to take away from the luxury and the price point that you're trying to sell at. So there's lots of factors involved here. Um, then of course you've got multilinguistics and, and different markets and everything else. Uh, it's an absolute beast and probably one of the biggest challenges in the world of e-commerce for sure. Yeah, I'm sure we cannot cover this in the e-commerce coffee break. Um, tell me, Luke, about dofinder.com. I understand it's a Shopify app. Um, how difficult is it to implement? How long does it take? All right, so dofinder itself is a search solution uh, predominantly but it is available on Shopify. It's also available on WooCommerce uh, and I use it on my own personal uh, e-commerce project. So DoFinder is a really good go-to for SMBs, for startups um, and for businesses who are on, uh, on a number of platforms. What it basically does is give you the tools, the reporting and the ability to use things like autocomplete, uh, smart filters. You've got great reporting to add synonyms. You can throw in third party data sources if you wanted to, if you've got other things that you want to throw in, as we said before, um, sales performance on the channels, for example. Um, it's great at dealing with multilingual uh, queries and it's great on mobile. Um, and all of that kind of combined into what is quite effectively a very low cost solution just makes DoFinder a really almost like a no brainer if you're on Shopify, if you're on WooCommerce, or even if you're on BigCommerce, whatever the platform is, it could be spoke or whatever. If you really want to level up your site search and we use this into native or you know you've got gaps, um, then DoFinder is a, a great way to go to really move the needle. Um, a lot of search providers will do this, but one thing I will make clear about DoFinder as well is that they have almost, one thing that I really like is as you're searching for queries, you get almost like a, a product landing page, sorry, product listing page uh, built for you as the query happens. So normally autocomplete, you get um, almost looks like spreadsheet rows, right? So it takes up half the screen on mobile, maybe a quarter of the screen on desktop. 
but the way it works on DoFind, you almost get this blocky modular um, product listing page effect, and it makes it a lot easier for people who are searching, especially with quite broad inventories, to find and send uh, people to the product that they want to. Um, so yeah, it's it's an easy plug and play. It's relatively inexpensive, and it's, it's definitely worthwhile taking up. Okay, where can our listeners find out more about DoFinder and yourself? Yeah, so DoFinder, um, quite a unique name. So you, you won't struggle to find information, but of course you've got the main website, uh, DoFinder.com. We can have a conversation as well. If anyone who's listening or watching this is uh, is interested, um, there's, there's we can have a conversation for sure. There's, there's people I can refer you to. Um, as for myself, again, equally quite a unique name, uh, Luke Carthy, if you Google me, uh, you'll see the website and I've, I'm on Twitter and all sorts of things like that. But um, yeah, if anyone needs help in growing e-commerce through site search or e-commerce in general, um, then that's that's where you can find me. That's what I do. Cool. Excellent. I will put, as always, the links in the show notes so people can reach you with one click. Thank you, Luke, so much. We could possibly talk for another couple of hours about SEO and how to optimize your store, um, maybe another time. Again, thanks for your time. Uh, it was really insightful and talk soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Take care. Hey, Klaus here. Before you leave, I have a question for you. Are you a Shopify store owner and you're feeling stuck, overwhelmed, and not sure what to do next to grow your business? Do you struggle to convert traffic into sales and turn website visitors into buyers? Do you want to have direct access to a mentor who can assist you with your store, your strategy, offer marketing, sales, and anything else you might need in your business? Then I would invite you to apply for my Get Conversions program, where I show you how to remove the guesswork out of growing your Shopify business and create clarity to optimize your business for maximal growth and profit. This is an application-only program. To apply, go to klauslauter.com to learn more. And finally, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and comment. It's a huge help and allows me to reach more people with this channel. Thanks in advance and until next time at the e-commerce coffee break.